was that yeah, important. Yeah, it was alright. Yeah. Right. Let's see. Check again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Testing, testing. I joined this from Logan. Yeah, we in there. Right. Shalom, shalom. Khan. All right, before we start and, and do go any further, we want to give all praises unto our power. Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Kapadash. Yahweh is the Heavenly Father's name. All right, Yahweh Shai is his son's name. And by Hashem, Kapadash is the Holy Spirit. All right, that is given to the elect of Israel. Which peace and blessings to you all. And double honors to our elders and apostles, uh, known as great millstone in these times, right? The true leaders and rulers uh, of the elect of the nation of Israel coming back in the reincarnation. All right, you Puerto Ricans are not Puerto Rican. All right, this article came out uh, August 27th uh, two, of 2019 of this year. All right, and it's entitled Ancient, hold this, you can hold this up in front of there. It says, Ancient Stones with Hebrew Writing in Puerto Rico Authenticated. All right, because you Puerto Ricans, man, when, before you were Puerto Rican, and be, like we're going to get up into this article, you, before you were speaking Spanish and call yourselves a rich port, you uh, were a Hebrew Israelites, but you are Hebrew Israelites. All right, before you were speaking Spanish, you were speaking Hebrew. All right, before you, you were uh, uh, fully keeping all these worldly ass customs, you were keeping the customs of our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, because you Tainos, you indigenous people of Puerto Rico and those islands in Southern America, you are the descendants of the Hebrew Israelites. All right, the same people that were in slavery building the pyramids in Egypt in the ancient times are the same people that built the pyramids over here in Central and South America. All right, so we're going to read this article. All right, it says 800 ancient stones with Hebrew writing in Puerto Rico authenticated. It says, a remnant of ancient stones, 20, 20 of 800, made its way halfway across the world, solving a 3,500-year-old 3, mystery. Uh, what did these stones whisper about, about uh, Swati? What did these stones whisper, whisper about the pre-Columbian indigenous people of the island of Puerto Rico? It says, after rigorous academic testing, anthropologists, historians, academics, and millions of Puerto Ricans finally have scientific evidence that reveals the language of the stones. Right, because the language of, of a people are going to um, kind of tell you who that people are, you know, where they came from, where they originated. Now, the opening sentence said this, and, and I want a brother to get a precept on this. Mm -hmm. You get Amos 3 and 7 and anything else that brothers come spirit leads you to. It says a remnant of ancient stones, 20 of 800, made its way halfway across the world solving a 3,500-year-old mystery. All right? Mystery. Mm -hmm. Okay? I want to come when you, you know, when you got it. Go ahead, Amos, if you got it. This is Amos 3, verse 7. Surely the Lord power will do nothing, but he will he he revealed his secrets unto his servants the prophets. Right, and now that's why we are able to take articles like this and go into the scriptures and explain this, because it says that they found Hebrew writings on it. Alright? And we know that the original scriptures, the original scrolls before the books were all put together, were written in what? They were written in Hebrew. Alright? So it's not a mystery. They're trying to make it seem like it's a mystery off the jump, but it's not. It's plain. We know exactly what's up with this. We're going to keep going. The old brother, any brothers have another precept? No. All right. Let's go to uh, the next paragraph. It says, growing up in the mountains of work in Puerto Rico, my grandfather told me about some unique stones which were part of our ancient Taino Indian history. These rare stones were in the care of one of our greatest principal chiefs, uh, Cacique Agué. Age Bana, who when Columbus stumbled across our Taino people in 1492, was the principal chief of my home island of Borican, Borican, Puerto Rico. All right, or, oh, I'm sorry, Borican, which is Puerto Rico. All right, it says, knowledge of these stones first came to light when a very sick Taino woman who had tried everything from indigenous herbal remedies to ceremonies lay on her deathbed. Com 
compelled to, to tell a secret her family had carried for generations, she sent runners to find someone in the church who would listen. Notice it says she found someone in the church that would listen. All right, it says why she chose the church, we'll never know. Well, we know why, we got the secrets. It says, but a monk named Jose Maria Nazario E. Cancel came to her bedside. What's this? What this elder revealed to this monk changed the historical narrative of, of our precious island. It says, there in her tiny boho, the monk interceded for the old woman's healing. All right, I'm going to jump down. Okay, yeah, next paragraph. It says, Nazario had been educated at the University of Salamanca. His studies had included ancient languages, and he was amazed at what he saw after comparing the writing on the stones to others from around the world. He came to his conclusion that the writings, that the this, the, this writing was a form of ancient Hebrew. Because of his religious background, this fueled the possibility that a remnant of the lost tribes of Israel has settled on this island. All right, now we can get some of those precepts. Mm -hmm. All right, let's bring out whatever you got. I have some. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, this is the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 19 and verse 18. It says, In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan and swear to the Lord of hosts, one shall be called the city of destruction. Right. Now, to link that up, go uh, to the Genesis where it says the earth was of one language. Because that's what's going to happen now. All right? The, the whole earth is going to go back to speaking the language that was found on the remnants of these stones. All right? It says this writing was a form of ancient Hebrew. All right? Why does it say it was a form of ancient Hebrew? Because throughout time, of course, the dialect, the way that the certain words sound are going to change a little bit. All right? But the actual inscriptions, the writing themselves, when you look on these pictures of this stone, you can clearly tell that it's, uh, it's Lashwan Kadash, which means it's the holy tongue. You found that in Genesis? Kind yeah. of, yeah. Go ahead, I'll okay. read. I'll start at uh, Genesis. And then go back, and then hold Isaiah where you were, bro. I'll read Genesis 10, the last verse, and then keep reading. Okay. It says, These are the families of the sons of Noah after their generations and their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. Genesis 11, verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Right. And it says the whole earth was of one language, all right, and one speech. And that one language was the Hebrew, all right? Mm -hmm. It was the Lashwan Kadash that was passed on from the ancestors, all right, from, from Adam all the way down to uh, 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 Peleg, or Palag, which means division, where the Lord divided the languages. All right, passed on through Eber, Methuselah, all those men. That language has stood the test of time. Mm -hmm. I got this uh, Zephaniah 3 and 8. It says, Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Mm -hmm. For then will I turn to the people and pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. So this is that's this is part of that prophecy. Mm -hmm. Our people finding out what the true what the true language is. Because you Puerto Ricans again, you Puerto Ricans are not Puerto Rican. Alright? You are Hebrew Israelites. And how do we know? Because of stuff like this. Now the brother read the first verse because it's giving you a warning sign. It's telling you to wait because to see when all these nations are assembling themselves together. Because at that time, that's when the Lord is going to uh, uh, reveal his holy language unto the elect. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? We've been in war and we've been in that time ever since uh, the elder and apostle uh, Abba Bibbins was on the scene. All right? Mm -hmm. So we've been in that time for a while. The language is already here. Now the spirit is just having stuff being unearthed. Oh, get that. Uh, what's that? Luke 12. Luke 12 and uh, Luke 12 and 2, I think, or 12 and 22, or 12 and 12, uh, there's nothing hidden that shall not be revealed. The Lord right now is, 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 is bringing stuff to the light, man. Like you had that island off the coast of Africa where they used to, I believe they were Jakes. They sent all these people that were in slavery. Basically when they were done with them, they couldn't use them. They sent them to this island and there was no food. 
There's no trees, no no animals, or nothing, no mammals to starve to death over a period of time. And all those people, they all their bones, uh, uh, you know, of course, they uh, they they uh, they decayed, and then their bones went down to the ground. Now this was like 400 years. What did they say? Like 400 years ago, some shit like that. Now all those bones are washing up on this island of the shore. So you got an island down there off the coast of Africa where the beach, instead of uh, just seeing sand, all you see is a sea of what looks like white specks. Mm -hmm. But it's just bones, man. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And that's just the earth showing forth the truth, man. What's really going on? Because they would have never brought this information out about that island if them bones wouldn't have been... If they would have stayed in the ocean, they wouldn't have said shit. Yeah, it's been a couple of, you know? cover everything up. Yeah, but that's the Lord bringing the, his spirit back on the earth, man. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Ah. Okay, uh, Luke 12 and 2. You found it? Yeah. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Right, and we, that's because, and part of that uh, being known is us, because we know. We're the ones to give forth the knowledge, the understanding of the things that are going on right now. All right, and the Lord is the one uh, ultimately Yahweh about Yahweh Shai, through the Spirit of the Comforter, which is Yahweh Shai. He's the one that gives us the understanding, you know, for the things to be revealed unto others. Mm -hmm. You gonna say something? About yeah, can you read verse three as well? Go ahead. It's Luke twelve verse three. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness, shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Yes, sir. And um and they were speaking about this in, in, in um in their closets in their homes, man. You know the the that that woman with tribe she belonged to. Yeah. They was always speaking about this. They knew about those storms, but see the Lord put it in this time. You know when we nearing the end for that information to come out. Yeah. You know because I believe it's, I was reading the article. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you read it yet, but you read the part where it was like a mystery for three hundred years. But it was like this was a secret for four hundred years that they kept. Yeah. Oh, right here. It's uh. Yeah, you can read uh, that whole paragraph, huh? Time. Yeah, it's right under where the stone, that little stone thing is at. It says, uh, modern day Taino people say that Kat Kik, uh, uh, whatever that name is, Agbana, mm. kept this collection of inscribed stones safeguarded on the island and then buried them, fearing that the Spanish conquistadors, conquistadors might find them. They remained hidden in the earth for over 400 years. Until the dying Taino elder Juana Morales told Nazario about the stones and where to find them. Mm -hmm. You know? So it was hidden for over 400 years. Yeah. And now it's coming out. All of this, all of this is coming out, you know, yeah. right now because it's the end times, man. The Lord is uh, uh, uncovering the, the uh, or breaking, um, what is it? He's going to um, destroy the covering cast, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? Isaiah 25 and uh, 7. Somebody get that. I think that's Isaiah 25 or 7. If I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yeah, I got it right here. Yes, sir. It says, um, this is Isaiah 25 and 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. Yeah, that mountain is a, a representation of government, a power structure. So the Lord said he's going to destroy that mountain. All right, and it's going to start off with revealing all the lies. All right, because the covering cast when you when you someone throws a cover over you, everything gets darkened, everything's black, and you don't know where the hell to go. And then the, now the scripture also says that what he's going to make Esau bare, he's going to lift up his skirt. He shall not be able to hide himself anymore. He shall be uncovered. Mm -hmm. That's what the hell's going on right now. Mm -hmm. That's why Esau is in desperation mode. You know, because when you read or when you read articles through this. You're going to hear things like, yeah, this nigga, he said that on purpose to confuse people, mm -hmm. you know, or he probably told this person that you can't say certain things, all right, in this article, because he controls everything. He wants everybody to be confused. He doesn't want people to know that the Puerto Ricans, the Tainos, were speaking Hebrew when Columbus showed up. Because if that's the case, then, well, we're going to get further down. Yeah. You know, we got to read some more. Let me just get, oh, you got Psalms? Yeah. Hold on real quick. Let me read this paragraph. I'm going to read the one above that one, and then we're going to skip over it. It says, in 1893, Nazario wrote a short article titled, uh, Escritura uh, Aborigine de Caribe, the original, the, which means Aboriginal Writing of the Caribbean in which he explained his interpretations of the carvings. After a thorough analysis of the stones and the inscriptions, 
He dismissed in Arawak the Taino language origin, and by 1897, he concluded that the writings were more reminiscent of an ancient Hebrew. <clears throat> Comparing the discovery with the spoken Taino language of this day, Nazario discerned words in the Taino Arawak language that were Semitic in origin and pronunciation. One example is the Taino name for the supreme spirit of spirits, Yaya. By comparison, the god of the monotheistic Hebrew culture is known by the abbreviated form of his sacred name, Yah. Now you can read that precept. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Psalm 68 and, and 4. Can I start at 3? Yeah, 3. Yeah. Um, it says, um, but let the righteous be glad, let them rejoice before the Most High. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Sing unto the Most High, sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Jah, and rejoice before him. Right. Now, when you look that up in the, in the Hebrew, if you got the Hebrew characters, uh, where is it at? Uh, it should just be a Yah and a Ha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it says by Yah. Yeah, Yah and a Ha, which is Yah. Now, that's why, so why are the Puerto Ricans calling their supreme spirit Yah Yah? All right. Why were they saying Yah Yah? Because they're Hebrews. If they clearly were speaking Hebrew. Now, what I wanted to say was, if they're the he if if they're the sons of the Hebrews and their language is Semitic, that means they're related to uh, they're the lost tribes. They're related to the people in Israel. Now, the people of Israel have to answer to this because this whole thing of anti-Semitism. Because technically, if you're be if you're being anti-Semitic now, you're being anti-Puerto Rican because mm -hmm. the Puerto the original Puerto Ricans spoke a, a form of Semitic language, right? Mm -hmm. You see, they, sh they deserve a right to a portion in the land of Israel. And you gotta tell us what tribe they are. That's how we know that you're not the real Jews. And you Puerto Ricans, you're really not fucking Puerto Rican, you're not a rich port. You're fruitful, all right? You're what the scriptures uh, uh, call Ephraim, all right? Joseph's, Joseph's uh, second son. It says, uh, read and jump at the bar, Achmed precepts. I was, I was gonna say, uh, cause this is, uh, it says 19, I mean, 1893, and then 19, I mean, 1897. That's like over, about 120 years ago, man. You know, and that, that, that shows you that what they, they didn't want our dead, they, they let our dead bodies, um, just to be out there, man. They didn't let our dead bodies go to rest, man. They're not telling our people who they are, but they have this information over 100 years ago, man. Yeah. You know, a proper burial, burial. Yeah. It is, hey, because they want us to remain in the congregation of the dead, man. Right. You know, so that they can control over our people. Mm -hmm. I got something real quick. This Deuteronomy 33 and 28. It says, Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also, as heaven shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help. And who is the sword of thy excellency? And thy enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. So our enemies are going to be found liars, all right? Continue on. It says, It was well known on the island that Juana Morales was the last descendant of Principal Chief Aguebana. And all you Puerto Ricans, if you don't, if you claiming that you don't know who this principal chief is, Agabana, then you just might not be an original <coughs> Taino. This is clearly a real person. When you look this stuff up, this is not no fairy tale. The elders of the so of the so-called Puerto Ricans, the Taino people, they know this person. When you cross-reference it, all right. So it says uh, her story is still told among the mountain people in the interior of the island, who still identify as Hibaro, a word that Taino. A word that in Taino means people of the mountains, but which bears a strange resemblance to the word Hebrew. Mm. So the, the real, the real, the real, real Taino people were, were referring to themselves as Ibarra, which sounds exactly like Ibaria. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It says during the 19th and 20th century, uh, Agebana's library had been exhibited to the public several times and examined by expert scholars of high reputation who speculated that the writing was a form of Hebrew. It says many scholars agree these could not be a forgery. For some, some even theorize that the writings 
predated the Mayan and Inca writing system. In 2012, interest gained traction, and by 2019, it had picked global curiosity in the Middle East. New tests were used using, uh, hold on, let me skip down. Yeah, here we go. The stones are inscribed in a language script previously unknown to linguists with expertise in Phoenician and Proto-Hebrew. Expert linguists deciphered the writings to be a mixture of Hebrew with a little bit of Phoenician and an unknown script. Using carbon-14 tests on the red paint found on the stones, they have been dated to approximate 900 BC. That is the time when King David's son Solomon sent ships from Tarsus throughout the world to collect resources like bronze and gold. Did yeah, some of I those Hebrew that. sailors discover this island during their travels? Yeah, but see, here's the thing. They got their history mixed up. When Solomon sent the people over here, they didn't stay here. The tribes were over in Israel living good under Solomon. They came over here to gather resources. You know what I'm saying? They didn't come over here, set up shop, and leave a bunch of relics and stay here. All right? Matter of fact, those Omecs, those Omecs are actually uh, from the Hamites. All right? Because uh, when you go to, uh, go to it in Kings with his navy, it's going to tell you who left those over, who, who came over here. Yeah, this is uh, 1 Kings uh, 10 and 11. It says, And the navy also of Hiram that brought gold from Ophir, Brought in from Ophir great plenty of almond trees and precious stones. Sounds like your axe. What's that? No, it sounds like your axe. Oh, Read okay. that again. Yeah, come. It says, and the navy also of Hiram. This is um, First Kings ten. And look up the nationality of Hiram. First Kings ten and eleven. It says, mm -hmm. and the navy also of Hiram that brought gold from Ophir, brought in from Ophir great plenty of almond trees and precious stones. And the kings made of the almond trees pillars for the house of the Lord, and for the king's house harps also and palstries for singers. There came no such almond trees, nor were seen unto this day. And King Solomon gave unto the queen of Sheba all her desire, whosoever she asked. You got to get the, the part where it says the location of his navy. Because he had one, I think it said he had one in Zidon, which is on the Mediterranean Sea. And then he had one in, in uh, Edom, which is down there in uh, in the Gulf. All right, so he had a navy that would go out into the Mediterranean. And then he had another navy that would go down into the uh, into the Gulf there, and then down what's that into the Indian Ocean. All right, when you look on a map, let me pull the map up. But that's how Solomon got his resources, and it said that once in once in every one time in three years mm -hmm. that he would see them because that's how long it would take. All right, to get over verse, here. Read that verse 22. Mm -hmm. 10 and 22. Mm -hmm. Come, come, thanks. Uh, let me see. Verse 22. Yeah, this is um, 1 Kings 10 and 22. It says, For the king had at sea a navy of Darshish with the navy of Hiram, Hiram, once in three years came the navy of Darshish, bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes and peacocks. Yeah, because you have someone like the peacock, that's in that turkey family, all right? So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which Yahweh had put in his heart. And they brought every man his present vessels of silver and vessels of gold and garments and armor and spices, horses and mules a rate year by year. Yeah, that's the point, mm -hmm. you know. That's how they got over here, you know, during Solomon's time. Because in this article, it said they, they dated it back to 900 B.C., all right? But the tribes didn't come over here until after Solomon fell off. We can get that in uh, Kings as well, and then we can get the Apocrypha, all right, how the Ten Tribes got over here. I was about, I was about to say, because um, back in the article, when it, in that, that last uh, paragraph you read, it said many scholars agreed that these could not be a forgery. So now, you got, you know, Vocab, he was trying to say that uh, the Los Luna stone was, was not real, man, as if it was forged. Well, what can you say about these 800 stones, man? 
that many of them agree that's not forgery. Eight hundred. Yeah. That's why. That's why the Lord had it hidden in so 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 that it could be real after somebody says something like that, man. Uh, what uh, Hiram? Who is yeah, Hiram. Hiram. We got it. Out. The, oh, you got it. Uh, yeah, it said uh, a king of Tyre was sent workmen and material to Jerusalem to build both the palace of David and the temple of Solomon. Yeah, and the people of Tyre were Hamites. All right, they were very skilled in that. So we became rulers over them. They became tributaries to us, all right? And they enjoyed it, man, because they were good at it, you know? They were happy to work for Solomon, man, all right? Now, uh, and they're going to be happy again to work for uh, Solomon the kingdom, all right? Except that first that first little bit of working is going to be some hardcore slavery, Yeah. you know? But when that slavery is over, you're going to be in peace. But before that, guess what? We're going to have your ass traveling around the globe again, getting whipped. <laughs> All right? Getting whipped. You know, and you better be back before a year and a half. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're not. <laughs> We're going to send your ass out there again. It's just going to be hard to navigate around Leviathan. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's going to be very difficult, man. Right? All right? Let's go ahead, Austin. This is uh, First Kings 9 and 26. And King Solomon made a navy of ships in Zion Geber, mm -hmm. which is beside Elah, and on the shore of the Red Sea in the land of Edom. Right, so there's two places. He had one on, on, uh, on Zidon and then one on the shore in Edom. Because when you look at a map, Edom, Edom's lot was situated on water. All right, and then Zidon, Zidon's uh, uh, location was also situated on water. All right, because if you, if you have a port city, all right, you can make a lot of money. All right, mm -hmm. you can control a lot on the earth, and that position, that port, that position there on earth is the most uh, powerful position on earth, man. Right? That's why the Lord chose to put us in that land. All right. Uh, yeah, something else. Uh, I just had uh, a drop with righteous and authority. People rejoice. Yeah, go ahead, bro. Come, come, come. You got it out. This is throw that on the coal, bro. Uh, uh, this is a. Uh, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 10. It says, When it goeth well with the righteous, the city rejoiceth, and when the wicked perish, they're shouting. You know, just backing up what the elder was saying that uh, these Hamites are going to be joyous building, or going back to the state of servitude and building what we say is building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also in Proverbs 29, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pretty much the same thing. This, this Psalms 111 and um, it's, uh, yeah, Psalms 111 and 6 it says he has showed his people the power of his works that he may give them the heritage of the heathen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's coming you know and it's, it, it already took place in the history too so how much more so yeah you Puerto Ricans you these heathens you were not calling yourselves Puerto Ricans mm -hmm. you were calling yourselves Hibaro mm -hmm. all right all right, you so uh, you so called Tainos, but you're not. Taino is not a son of Ephraim. Ephraim didn't have no sons named Taino, so that's not even you either. All right, if anything, you're closer to Hibaro. All right, which which sounds way more closer to Hebrew. Okay, you used to write in Hebrew, you used to speak in Hebrew, but the same way the so called Negroes, all right, and and West Indians got beat and lynched. And their language got stripped from them. And now we speak in English. The same thing happened to you. When our people in the interiors of West Africa, they were speaking um, they were speaking Hebrew, man. Mm -hmm. their, their lands were named after Hebrew names. All their kids, well, you know how many uh, uh, West Africans are named Ibrahim? <laughs> All right. A lot of them. You know? You know how many uh, West African women are named Martha, Mary, Maria? Mm -hmm. You know? Which, mm -hmm. you know, those are all the same names. Right. Right. Martha, when you look up Martha, when you look up Mary, when you look up Maria, in the Hebrew, it all says Mariam. Mm. It's all the same Hebrew word, you know. <laughs> that's 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 our people. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Right? This is Jeremiah seventeen and four. It says, "And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy inheritance that I gave thee, mm -hmm. and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not." For ye have kindled a fire of fire and 
in uh, in my anger, which shall burn forever. Mm. You know, and that's what happened. You know, that's what happened to all the tribes. You know, that's but in the scriptures, in the book of Peter, it said that it shall stir our pure minds into remember. And that's what's happening with articles like this coming up. This is Acts chapter 26, verse 13. At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me, and then was journeyed with me. Verse, and, verse 14. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Right. Now, there was somewhere in this article, I, don't, I can't remember where it was, where they said basically that their their spirit was gonna come get them, like the great spirit was gonna come get them or something like that. Basically, he came and he spoke to them. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, when he spoke to them, he spoke to them what in their language, mm -hmm. just like how the Lord spoke to Paul what in the Hebrew tongue. Mm -hmm. People, the people are so quick to say that the Lord was Aramaic. Mm -hmm. The word Aramaic or Aram is not even in the the, uh, the New Testament. What are you talking about? The word Aramaic is not even in the scriptures. They don't. Even, or they not, They don't even say that he was Syrian. You know, they just say that he was Aramaic. <laughs> he was Middle Eastern. Okay, people in the middle, and all people in the Middle East don't speak Aramaic. Yeah. Even you got. Even though they're rats, they they what? They speak Hebrew. Cool. You have people in the Middle East that speak Hebrew, man. That's right. So how, how are you so quick to say he speaks Aramaic? He knocked when he Paul fell off the horse and he heard someone speaking to him. He heard this. He said he spoke in the Hebrew tongue and he told him that I am your Howard shot. Huh. Go ahead, you gonna know, say something? Huh. Huh. Peace up. Actually, in the book of Hebrews, it's Come. Hebrews 7 and 14. That's right. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, mm -hmm. of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Yeah. You know, just. It's in the scriptures in the New Testament it says that our Lord is a Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. Nothing about Aramaic or anything like right. that. Yep. You want that um, account, Paul? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you got it? There's two of them. Which where are you at? Acts twenty six. Which yeah. one? That's what I was at. Okay, yeah. Keep reading. Um, this is Acts twenty six and fourteen. And when you were fa all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul. Why persecutest thou me? It is harder for thee to kick against the pricks. Right, just like just how it mentions um, when on the uh, on when Yahweh Shah was getting hung on that cross, it said Eli, Eli, Shabak, uh, Shabak mm -hmm. yeah. Oh power, oh my power, oh my power! Why hast thou forsaken me? Yeah. Can yeah. we get that? Yeah. Type in Eli, Eli. I want to see if it says that he said in his tongue. All right, because. The same language that he, you thought his language changed from when he got, when he got uh, killed. All right. Like he was going to speak Hebrew when he was on the cross, but now all of a sudden he's Aramaic, you know, now he's, he's also Aramaic. No, man. For, when his name, it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. They didn't say shit about Aramaic, yeah. you know? And the reason why we're bringing this out is because, again, you Puerto Ricans, these 800 stones that were found mm -hmm. had Hebrew writings on them. In the scriptures, it tells you that the Lord was speaking to Paul in the Hebrew tongue. That means the Savior of the world, all right, is kin you are related, directly related to him. All right? I'll bring out those precepts. Uh, Matthew uh, 27 and 46. And about the ninth hour, Yahweh cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, Lama Shabbatana. Uh -huh. That is to say, my God, my God. Why have thou forsaken me? Right, and it's, he said that in the Hebrew tongue. All right? Because God in the Hebrew is El. Uh, uh, when they say Eli, Eli, that's like uh, yeah, anytime, Allah. Yeah, anytime you see Allah, you see El. Anytime you see El, it means Allah. And that I is always a Yah. Yeah. Always. Yep. Allah. Allah, 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 Allah. Yep, Allah, 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 which means, oh my God. Oh my, if you were to say, oh my God, OMG, Allah, Yah, that's what you're saying. They even had it in blue letter too, Allah. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. Spirit. Um, now let's get that other precept. This is John. Uh, this is when uh, Pilate wrote um, the 
title. Okay. This is John 19 and 19. And Pilate wrote a title and put and put it on the cross. Mm-hmm. And and the writing was Yahweh Shai of Nazareth, mm-hmm. the king of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews. And the place where Yahweh Shai was crucified was night in the city. And it was written in the Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Right, and that name that was written in Hebrew is the same exact Hebrew that was found on these stones. All right, because that's the in- those are the ancient writings, man. You didn't see the Yiddish with dots and consonants and stuff up there on the plank. All you saw was uh, you saw the Yah, the Ha, the Wa, uh, uh, the Sha, and the I, man. All right, and then in the Greek and in the Latin, you had those specific characters in that language to make it sound like. Yahweh Just like if we were to write it, we would write Y A H A W uh, A S H I. All right. Which in English, when it's written in English, you're saying Yahweh but it's the Hebrew pronunciation. All right. And that's exactly what was found on these stones. Okay, I appreciate it. Okay, and then we're gonna get uh, how the ten tribes got over here. Uh, second, Second Peter three and one. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Mm-hmm. You know, and I looked up the phrase stir up in the Greek, it's like digerio or something like that. And it says to wake up. So the Lord, you know, he woke up our minds to remember uh, who we are. You mm-hmm. know, and you can't call yourself a Hebrew Israelite and you don't even know the Hebrew or speak the Hebrew. Right. Like they do. And yeah, and all you, and let me put this out there too. All right, I'm going to say it just like this. All you niggas that say Christ more than you say Yahweh Shai and you're in camps teaching, all right, the Lord is not dealing with you, man. You say you say Christ way more than you say Yahweh Shai. Why don't you, inc- and you don't even have to say Yahweh Shai. You can say the Lord, but you're going to say Christ, you can at least say the Lord. Because the thing is, when you say the Lord, people don't get this concept in their head of, you know, they don't get a misconception. When you say Christ, people mm-hmm. are already, you know, yeah, they got a mindset. That's, yeah. that's what, right, that's what it is, brother. That vibration, that mm-hmm. energy is fucked up, man. Mm-hmm. You know? Like some white guy. Some so-called white guy. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's what they're thinking of. When you see Christ is weak. Yeah. Hamashiach is yeah. strong, man. That's but, right. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. It's Baruch 3, uh, Baruch chapter 2, verse 30. It says, For I knew... That they would not not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. For in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. Yeah, that's what's going on, man. You had that's the reason why this elder, before she died, she told this this uh, this guy Zario to go find them stones. I'm gonna tell you where them stones are, and then that was passed down through the generations. It was 1897. Mm-hmm. That was what 110, 100. 20, almost 120 years ago. Mm-hmm. That's not that long. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? One day is like a thousand years to the Lord. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, 121 years ago. That's 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 not that that that's not that far away. Now for those things to be unearthed and excavated, that's only the power of Yahweh Shai, man. Mm-hmm. That's it. I'm gonna read uh, the next paragraph. It says, "Will history be rewritten to include this fascinating new evidence?" No. Mm-hmm. There's not enough time. It says, were the people who inscribed these ancient stones part of the sacred, part of the scattered tribes of Israel as recorded in the Bible? Why would you ask, that's a dumbass question. Let's get the scriptures. Get the, uh, get where Solomon, where they split, and then let's go to the Apocrypha. That's why they took out, that's why, man, you Puerto Ricans, you have no idea who you are, because they took this book out of the scriptures that they started letting you read. All right, and I'm pretty sure they had the same law. If you got caught reading the Santa Biblia, you got put to death. You know, mm-hmm. if you got caught reading comics, you just got beat. You know, mm-hmm. go ahead, Ot. We got God and Kings. We got split. Yeah, yeah. This is uh First Kings chapter eleven, started verse eleven. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee. And that was not kept my covenant and my statutes which I have commanded thee. I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding in thy in the days I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of thy son, 
I mean, I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Howbeit, I will not rent away all of the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's when, that's where we were going. Yeah. Now, now go to uh, what is it? Chapter uh, thirteen. Yeah, thirteen. Okay. And don't you have? Uh, might be able to look up there and see what time it was. Uh, go ahead and get that uh, precept though. See when he broke the see John. Or Jeroboam started with him. Or just look it up on your phone. Go ahead, Doc. Because in an article, it said that these, they dated it to 900 BC. And they think that it was, they were left here in that year. So let's see. Let's look up the year when, because really the truth is, they were actually left when the tribes landed here, which we're going to read about, all right? And then walk over no damn ice bridge. You're not going to catch no Israelite. Walking over no ice with his family, trying to go find a, a, a home. You know what I'm saying? We are tropical people, all right. Especially you ain't gonna catch no northern kingdom. <laughs> That's what's funded by the school system, Great Barren Straits. Yeah, that that lie. Yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying to pull it up because I got when uh, King Hoshea carried them away. Mm-hmm. In uh, Second Kings. Yeah, read the precept while the brothers are looking up. The okay, you talking about the edges? You got it? Yeah. yeah. What's it say? It says he reigned from 922 to 901. Who's that? Jeroboam. Okay, so it's, it's close. It's right around that time frame. All right? But the thing is, the thing is, the tribes, um, they were in the Assyrian captivity for a period of time. All right? The stones didn't just get left as soon as Jeroboam started ruling. You know, he had to be wicked, and the Lord had to send the adversaries uh, of Israel against us. Yeah. So let's read that. Yeah, this is the uh, second. It's probably, it's probably more closer. We have to look up how long we were, they were, we were in the Assyrian captivity. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to look up. Uh, that's Second Kings 17. Okay. Um, but I got uh, Second Ezra 13 and verse 40. It says, And whereas thou sawest that he gathered another piece of the multitude unto him, those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of O'Shea the king, whom Solomon Nasser, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. Mm-hmm. You speak on it, bro. Yeah, yeah. Well, they got carried away into another land. And um, that well, the, what they called this land at one point, Asareth, that means another land as well, you know? You want me to keep going? Or that was the point. No, go to Kings. First Kings? Mm-hmm. All right. This is the... Oh, shit, I'm in the wrong thing. No, Second Kings. I'm going on Wikipedia. It says Second Kings 15 and 29. John. This is Second Kings 15 and verse 29. It says, In the days of Pekah, king of Israel... Came Tiglath Pelasir, king of Assyria, and took Ajan and Abim, Abel Beth Machak, and Jonah, and Kadesh, Kadesh, and Hazor, and Gilead, and Galilee, and all the land of Naphtali, and carried them captive to Assyria. And Hoshea, the son of Elah, made a conspiracy against Pekah, the son of Ramallah and smote him and slew him and reigned in his stead in the 20th year of Jotham the king of Uzziah um, it says in the rest of the acts of Pekah and all that he did behold they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel uh, no I want Second Kings 17 and, uh, I think it's verse 3 Uh, well, I got my um, Apocrypha 17.5 and then 23 as well. So 17. I also see it in 2 Kings 18, starting at verse 9 through 11. Who got 16 11? Oh, yeah, yeah, let me see. Uh, Let's get that. Bear with us real quick. Here, 
here go right here started uh Start at 23, 17 to 23, and read down. Slot. There you go. Yeah, this, go is, ahead, Ron. this is 2 Kings 17, verse 23. Until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants, the prophets, so was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Kutha, and from Awa, and from Hamath, and from Sepharim, and placed them in the city of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. Yeah, so the Lord, he took you Puerto Ricans out of your land, all right? You Puerto Ricans, you're originally in the northern country of, uh, of Israel, all right? And, and the Syrians, they took us out. They took us out of our land, and then they placed heathens in our land, mm -hmm. which was what was the start of you discontinuing from your heritage. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I, I got a scripture for that. Go ahead. This is uh, Deuteronomy 29 and verse 27. It says, And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against this land to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. And Yahweh rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land. As it is this day. Mm -hmm. That's one of the main curses of losing our heritage, man. Come. Go ahead, Art. Verse 25. And so it was at the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not the Lord. Mm -hmm. Therefore the Lord sent lions among them, which slew some of them. Yeah. Wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations which thou hast removed and placed in the cities of Samaria know not the manner of this of the power of the land. Therefore, he has sent. And that's what happens when you don't, when you call yourself believing in the power and you're not doing what you're supposed to do. That's why you Puerto Ricans got whacked, man. That's why a lot of dead bodies was floating around not too long ago when you got hit with uh, that hurricane. Mm -hmm. All right, because you so called Puerto Ricans, you're supposed to be the head child of all the so called Latinos and Native Americans, man. You were the head. All right. Just like uh, who you read as Joshua in the scriptures. If he was walking around today, they would consider him a Puerto Rican, all right? A so-called Puerto Rican or Taino, but he's really a son of Ephraim, just like you so-called Puerto Ricans are, man. And we got the proof. We got the proof of what your original language was. 800 stones worth of proof. Yeah. Go ahead. And you know they're going to keep these stones in museums. They're going to not let nobody uh, 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 go down there and try and take stones home for themselves as relics. They'll kill you. You know, because well, uh, you had said what you had said mm -hmm. while they're getting jacked up like that. It was an article that came out was this February 2nd, 2019. I read it a long time ago. I remember this. Okay. It says European colonizers killed so many. This is just the title of it, CNN. It says European colonizers killed so many Native Americans that it changed the global climate. So that's how bad y'all got it, man. You know, for worshiping them, them false gods, man. That's fucking crazy. You affect the planet and kill so many people. We saw the wicked. That's a wicked motherfucker. Mm -hmm. You Puerto Ricans, you caught the you caught the end of it. Why? Because you didn't want to worship the Lord, your power, with all your heart and all your might, while you were in the land. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Kicked your ass out and then psh, assassinated all of you. You know, got you out the way, just about. Mm -hmm. You know, except oh, you still got that revelation. No. Yeah, yeah. Hold that. Just okay. hold it. Okay. Okay, we're gonna get those two last. I wanna finish this and um you already read the apocrypha, right? I ain't finished. Okay, yeah, hold it. Go ahead, Doc. Know not the manner of the power of the land. Mm -hmm. Therefore he hath sent lions among them, and behold, they slay them, because they know not the manner of the power of the land. Mm -hmm. Verse twenty seven. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom he brought from thence, and let them go and dwell there. And let them teach them the manner of the power of the land. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear the Lord. Right, that's why you got some Cushites. They uh, they cling hard to uh, our beliefs, man. They think that they're Jews. Especially over here where we stay at in uh, the D.C. area. 
A lot of them got the uh, the shofar star David. They I went to a place to eat the other night. They had a shofar behind the bar, man. Big ass shofar, you know. That's why it goes. It dates. It's all spiritual. It all dates back to that. Even the woman at the well. All right, yeah. that's that's good on that, bro. Finish that. In, uh, well, let me read some more of this real quick. It says the state of Israel has acknowledged a Hebrew presence in our ancient mountains in the times long past, and we, the good and noble people, the Taino, send our warmest regards and blessings to our long lost cousins. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with oh, Jake, man? Gotta be dumb. Uh, 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 Hosea 4 and 6. This, o- yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. this Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. It reads, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Right, this joint says, We send our warmest regards and blessings to our long lost cousins. It's, and then next it says, Or are we the long lost ones? <laughs> right. Read that again now. Mm-hmm. Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Because thou is rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Right, what's the knowledge? The knowledge means to know. Know who you are. Know your language. You know, know what know that your powers, his name is not Yahya, it's Yahweh. And his sure. son's name is Yahweh Shah. The only one who can get you out of the current predicament that you in. Go ahead. It's, it reads, I'll, it says, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy power, I will also forget thy children. Right, now we're going uh, to fin- finish out the Apocrypha. Come. This is 2 Andrews 13, verse 41. It says, But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind, uh, where never mankind dwelt, that they might there keep their statutes which they never kept in their own land. And they enter into the Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. For the Most High then shows signs. Right. Why did they enter? In, why did those ten tribes enter into the narrow passages of the river? Because that that river went all the way up into where the Assyrian, the main hub for the uh, the Assyrian Empire was. So we fled from that empire, from that captivity. The Lord allowed us to, to our people to escape. We so-called Puerto Ricans to escape and enter into the, U- the Euphrates River, all right, and sail all the way around Africa and land over there in, uh, on that island down there, uh, so-called Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. Now, the Lord, it said the Lord had to hold still the floods, mm-hmm. you know, because those waters are treacherous going around Africa, even out there in the middle of the Atlantic, man. Mm-hmm. Anything can happen, mm-hmm. you know, a fucking... Uh, the shit that looks like a toilet bowl, a whirlpool, yep. mm-hmm. that shit could bring a whole uh, yacht down, man. Mm-hmm. You know? Now, think back then, they didn't have motors and shit mm-hmm. to, they just had the wind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you put the sail up, you had to hope that the wind would carry you. So that's what it was. The Lord said he had to hold still the winds. Mm-hmm. All right? So that means if he has the power to hold still the winds, that means he has the power to make the wind go a certain direction, to make us go a certain direction. And that's what happened. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I can also say because it said that they went to a, a further country where never mankind dwelt, mm-hmm. which that's what they try to say, well, Columbus and them try to say, the, the colonizers, man. You know, so it just it goes to show you, because mind you that the, uh, well, during slavery, when we were in slavery, the apocrypha was a part of the Bible, so which means that those scripts, before they all got put together, that was a part of the Bible. So that's why Columbus wrote those Hebrew interpreters, man, because they knew where they was going. And it says, uh, but yeah, it says, I'll read that, that one last verse again. Second Hedges 13, verse 44 it says, For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely a year and a half. And the same reason is called Asareth, mm-hmm. which we already said that uh, it took three years, mm-hmm. you know, there and back yeah. when we were going with Solomon's Navy. Yeah. Uh, it says, Then. Yeah, then dwelt they there until the latter time, and now when they shall begin to come. Uh, uh, Genesis, sorry. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to get you Puerto Ricans. You, how we know you ain't Puerto Ricans, all right? Mm-hmm. It's according to prophecy. Read verse 1 and then jump to uh, this, 22. Yeah. Yeah, Genesis 49 and 1. 
And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. It says, Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken Israel your father. Right, so Jacob, our ancestor, our Israel, his name got changed to Israel. He, he gathered all his sons together to tell them, look, this is what's going to happen to you in the end times. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we're in that. We've been in the end times for a very long time now, a couple hundred years. All right. So now we're going to get to his son, Ephraim, mm -hmm. Go ahead, which is you Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. You come from the tribe of Ephraim. All right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, now it says, uh, Joseph is a fruitful bow, even a fruitful bow by a well. Right. Now, Joseph is Ephraim's father. All right, when you see Joseph in the scriptures, that's Ephraim. All right, now the older son, Manasseh, you always see Manasseh. But when you see Joseph, that's a representative of Ephraim or the northern kingdom as a whole in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. All right. It says, whose branches run over the wall. Right, it says, he is a, it said, Joseph is a fruitful bowl. Now, Joseph's name means the most high has added. All right, the most high will add, Yahweh Sah. But Ephraim's name means I am fruitful, a party, ah. I, uh, par, fruit, and then the young makes it plural, so I am fruitful. So he said that Ephraim is a fruitful bow, and you Puerto Ricans are fruitful as hell, man. You got a colony in every state. You got colonies in other countries. Yeah. This part of the Bronx is just Puerto Rico. If you don't know, if you don't know Spanish, you're in a bad situation. It's just like you go into another country, you better know how to say ayudame, which means help me. You know, you better know a few words, all right? Why? Because you're fruitful. You're everywhere. Now keep going. It says the archers have sorely grieved him, and shot at him and hated him. Mm -hmm. But his bow abode in strength, and the arm of his hand were made strong by the hand of the mighty power of Jacob. Yeah, read that verse again. It says, but his bow abode in strength. And the arms of his hands. Right, it says his bow abode in strength. What is that? That's talking about um, his uh, his lineage, all right? His strength. Because where does your strength come from? It comes from your, uh, your stock. All right, go ahead. It says, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty power of Jacob. Right, and if you know, if you notice what? It says, does it say his bow shoot over the wall? Um... No. Go, no, go to Deuteronomy the 33rd chapter mm -hmm. and get Ephraim. All right. Now, how is he made strengthened? Well, Puerto Rico is the only uh, uh, island that is a U.S. state aside from the Virgin Islands. You don't need a passport to travel to Puerto Rico. All right. Puerto Rico is considered a state. All right. Now, in Deuteronomy 33, it should say, it should refer to how Ephraim bows shoot over the wall. All right. Cause this, that's that, that's the that's the one place, and the, remember, keep in mind the whole country is a Spanish-speaking country, but somehow they're a state. You found it. It starts in um, verse thirteen. Yeah, 13, yeah verse thirteen. Yeah, you can go ahead. Uh, Deuteronomy thirty-three and thirteen, and of Joseph he said, "Blessed of the Lord, be his land, for the precious thing of heaven, for the dew, and for the deep that crouches beneath." Right, and it was so precious. It was so precious. That they were literally cutting off Taino's hands that they didn't bring them enough gold mm -hmm. and, and sending them back to their people as a warning. They were split. I remember Zanala brought it out in that book. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they yeah. Was, remember, they split their hand in half and mm -hmm. they put a message inside of it. Mm -hmm. Then they tie their hand up and send them back to uh, to, the to, mountains, do, right? yeah, to deliver yeah. the message. Mm -hmm. Oh, the and, and, not, and keep in mind, they still had to collect gold with their hand dangling and shit. Mm -hmm. You know? That's the worst. And he wasn't just doing it to grown men. Everybody got their hands split, man. Yeah. Huh. Just like up here, slavery. If you were if you were a grown man, you had to bring a hundred pounds of cotton a day. If you were a woman, you had to bring fifty pounds of cotton a day. If you were a child, you had to do twenty five pounds of cotton a day. You know, if you were elder elderly, you had to do ten pounds of cotton a day or something like that. It didn't matter. A hundred pounds is a lot, man. You know? That's just like in time of uh, when we was in Egypt. And they had us working, uh, and then they took the tools away, and we still had the same quota to do. Yeah. You know? We had to get on the straw. You yeah. got to remember, 100 pounds is 100 pounds. If you have 100 pounds of feathers mm -hmm. and 100 pounds of iron, you're still lifting 100 pounds. Yeah. People hear cotton, they think, oh, that's easy. 
No, then the process is hard as hell. Imagine trying to pluck ro rose petals all day. You would fuck your hands up. It's the same way cotton is, man. It's like a Venus flytrap for some cotton. You know? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Ark. It says, it says, and this is verse 13. And of Joseph, he said, blessed of the Lord be his land for the precious thing of That's heaven. Spirit. This guy's name, this guy's name, the next paragraph, his name is Chief Joseph yeah. Amahura Riverwind. <laughs> his name is Chief <laughs> Ephraim. <laughs> it makes it, it makes it might as well be Chief Ephraim. Go ahead, bro. It says, blessed of the Lord be his land for the precious thing of heaven, for the dew and for the deep that crouches beneath. And for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun, and for the precious things put forth by the moon, yeah. and for the chief things of the ancient mountains, and for the precious things of the lasting hills, yeah. and for the precious things of the earth, and fullness thereof, for the good will of him that dwell in the bush, let the blessing come upon the head of Joseph, and upon the top of the head of him that was separated from his brethren. His glory is like the firstling of his bullock, and his horns are like the horns of a unicorn, mm -hmm. of unicorns. With them, he shall push the people together to the end of the earth, and they are the 10,000 of Ephraim, and they are thousands of Manasseh. Mm -hmm. This is in, in Zebulon. That's it, that's yeah. it, go to Revelation. It says Revelation 7, and then, uh, and then I'm going to want that Romans. Go ahead, uh. Revelation 7, verse 6. Of the tribe of Asher, sealed 12,000. 12, of the tribe of Naphtali, sealed 12,000. Uh, 12, and uh, of the, twi the tribe of Manasseh, were sealed 12,000. You know? And that uh, Manasseh, like the brother was uh, going into, that Manasseh also represents Ephraim. You know? Yeah, part of the, because uh, Ephraim, because when you hear Ephraim, uh, it refers to the northern kingdom, you know? So when you see Ephraim, you think of Zebulon, you think of Asher, you think of Issachar. Mm -hmm. That's what the brother means, you know? But some people think that, you know, Ephraim and Manasseh are the same people. No. The Manasseh are the Cubans, all right? Like Gideon. Uh, uh, Gideon, the man that sa saved us from the Midianites with 300 men, all right? Who had, uh, who, I think he had, I think he had uh, 800 sons, 800 sons and daughters, because he had many wives. All right, he had like 70 wives or something like that. Had like 800 kids. All right, and, that, and he was <laughs> he was Manasseh. All right, that was the uh, that was the brother of Ephraim. All right, now in somewhere in Psalms. Come on. Okay. Well, I have that. Uh, I got Joseph right here. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Yep. Yeah, keep going. This is Revelation 7 verse 8. And of the tribe of uh, Zebulon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. You know, and there you go. You know, you got the tribe of Joseph in there too. And I was mistaken. I thought it was uh, just Manasseh. Yeah. <clears throat> this is uh, Psalms 77 and verse 15. It says, I'll start at 14. It says, Thou art the power that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among thy people. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people the sons of Jacob and Joseph, Salah, all right? And when it says Joseph, it's talking about that northern kingdom, which you still call Puerto Ricans are a part of, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. There's another scripture. It says that he refused the tents of uh, uh, Ephraim, but chose Judah, basically. Because Ephraim, you are, you are um, another one of those head tribes. It was Judah and Ephraim. Just type in tents of Judah, it might come mm -hmm. up. It's in Psalm somewhere. All right. I'll never forget that brother Shamar Ma. It was the first brother I ever heard bring that precept up. All right. Because, and that's another thing. You uh you other Hebrew Israelites out there, you believe that the so-called Latinos and Native Americans are Israelites. And what is this, what the hell is this all about? These 800 stones say otherwise, man. And you can't say the so-called white man planted them there. These are so-called Puerto Ricans, elders telling you that these stones were hidden on purpose, man, and that they needed to be unearthed. So eventually, you know, they must have known, the spirit must have known, told them that, look, our people are not going to know who they are. Mm -hmm. You know, these are hidden for a reason. You got to bring these out because our people are going to have to know what's up. Mm -hmm. We found it. Yeah, this yeah. is Zacharias 12, 
12 and 7 it says the no, 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 that's not a Well, that's a good one too mm-hmm. Let me, um You want to song? Yeah, it's one of songs Type in Judah And whatever comes up in songs It should be in the 70s Read that in Zechariah though mm-hmm. Yeah, Zechariah 12 and 7 It says The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first That the glory of the house of David And the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem Do not magnify themselves against Judah Right, because Judah's the head tribe, all right? The, uh, the Lord, even though Reuben was born first, and even though uh, Manasseh was born first of Joseph, he he chose to uh, the tents of Judah, because just like the brother read in Hebrew, Yahweh Shai comes out of Judah, of which tribe no, uh, of, of which tribe no, uh, was concerning Lord, priesthood, yeah. you know, because the priest came from the tribe of Levi, all right? Uh, uh, 78 and 67. Oh, what's chapter 78? Yeah, read that, all right. Yeah. I knew it was chapter, I knew it was in the 70s. This is uh, Psalm 78 in verse 67. Moreover, he refused the tabernacle of Joseph and chose not the tribe of Ephraim, but chose the tribe of Judah, the Mount of Zion, which he loved. Yeah, read, uh, read 67 again. This is uh, Psalm 78, verse 67. Moreover, he refused the tabernacle of Je- Joseph and chose not the tribe of Ephraim. Right. Why did it say that? That proves that what? Joseph is Ephraim. Because it didn't say, uh, moreover, he refused the tabernacle of Joseph and chose not the tribe of Manasseh. All right. It said Ephraim because Joseph, that, that uh, the whole process of how it was set up, when him crossing scenes, Ephraim was supposed to be set up to be uh, uh, the head. All right, and he became the head over uh, the northern kingdom. All right. Uh, read the next verse. Verse sixty-eight. But chose the tribe of Judah, the Mount Zion, which he loved, and he built his sanctuary like the high palaces, like the earth which he had established forever. Yeah, you can finish reading that chapter. Time. It says he chose David also his servant and took him from the sheepfolds, mm-hmm. from following the ewes. Great with young, he brought him to feed Jacob his people and Israel his inheritance. Right, and the reason, the reason why uh, we read in Revelation about how twelve thousand from Joseph is because that's the uh, that's the answer to all uh, uh, to the all the problems for the elect, these so called Puerto Ricans, man. You're wondering why you're in the condition you're in and what's going on, you're crying and crying, and you believe what we're saying, and that. You, you're starting to think, well, hey, you know what? Maybe I am a Hebrew Israelite. I need to start calling on Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. You could be part of that 12,000, all right? Or you could be part of the one-third that the scriptures speak of. But if you're not, you're going to have to get put to death, man. Because a lot of you, they still worship uh, Guadalupe and the Queen of Heaven, man. They got all types of rosary beads and shrines all in their crib, man. Mm-hmm. You know, I know certain parts of uh, Puerto Rico where they straight up practice witchcraft, all right? That's another reason why the Lord jacked up that island. All right, but the elect out of you so-called Puerto Ricans that, that are calling yourselves Bon Aparium, all right, the Lord that the Lord is dealing with, He's gonna come save us, and that's it. You know, you brothers have any more precepts? Yeah, there's almost two. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Let me the reason why I wanted that. Let me read what she Ephraim said. All right, it says Chief Joseph Amahura uh, Riverwind is a Arawak Taino Indian born in. Rio Cardas, Puerto Rico. He has ra- he was raised by his grandparents in the central mountains of Borican, which is Puerto Rico. His family are Hibaros from Cahuya, which is known as the indigenous capital of Puerto Rico. He also traces his lineage to the Bine Anusum, who fled Spain and Portugal in 1492. He is the author of thought-provoking book, which I might get this book, that was the old one, that's what the old ones say, pre-colonial revelations of God to Native America. He and his wife, Dr. Laura Lynn Riverwind, are speakers and national award-winning musicians based out of the Appalachian Mountains of Tennessee. Their heart for walking with the Creator is evident. Their passion for digging after the deep treasures of the ancient past is enlightening, and their zeal for the Creator is contagious. Mm-hmm. You see that? Now you can read that Romans. Uh, God, this is Romans chapter ten, verse one. Yeah, I see, I see. 
It says, brother, my heart desires and prayers to the power for Israel mm -hmm. is that they might be saved. Yep. But I bear them record that they have a zeal of the Most High, but not according to knowledge. Right, that's why you see that guy up there who's dressed like that, all right? He, he, you don't see a beard on his face. You don't see the fringes. You don't see him holding a Torah. You know, you see him holding something else. All right. That's why you had a, a, a lot of our people. They had a zeal, but they was over here, but naked, worshiping the sun mm -hmm. and sacrificing each other, and then eating each other. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Looking at the sun for so long that their vision was messed up. You know, the the, uh, the northern kingdom were heavy into that sun worship shit, man. Mm -hmm. That's why here it says. And their zeal for the creator is contagious, man. In the scriptures, didn't it see, uh, uh, what was a pilot? No, no, no. Uh, the ruler that said, Paul, you almost made me a believer. Oh, no, that was in Maccabees. No, 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 that's an act. That's an act. He said, you almost yeah. made me a believer. Why? Because his zeal was so contagious. That's the same. they got to be the same people. Who else has the most zeal? Jake could be in the absolute worst position. We see it all the time on the highways and byways. Mm -hmm. And our people still trying to figure out if the Lord is going to send some love to them. You know, if, if there's still some mercy. Yeah. Why? Because they got a zeal. They just don't know no damn better. Yeah. You know? If you could find that, that almost made me a believer. Yeah. That's 26 and 28. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is Acts 26, verse 28. Um, what well, thought 27, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. And Paul right, said, Paul had a contagious spirit, man. When you heard Paul speak, it's like, dang, I know that's true. Yeah. Like, there's no way that he's lying to us right now. It, it kind of reminded me when Apostle Taha was uh, debating the light. It's like, like y'all almost, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. almost got it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. almost got it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why um, the scriptures say, man, when, when, the, when persecution comes, you know, take no thought of, of what you shall say because, hey, he going to put the words in our mouth and then they ain't going to be able to say anything against us, man. It's going it's gonna to be, it's just going to be true, man. Even our enemies, they're going to be like, mm -hmm. they ain't going to know what to say, man. Right, they're going to have to believe. <laughs> um, neither name, uh, name, name, uh, game say, yeah, game say no resist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There were certain times when Yahweh Shah was done speaking and the scripture said they had nothing else to say to him. <laughs> they had no more questions for him. And that's what's going to happen. And this truth and this language gets established, like I said, in uh, Zephaniah, the third chapter, after all hell breaks loose, ultimately. Mm -hmm. All right? When you start seeing men with spiritual power <coughs> speak, speaking in Hebrew, calling fire down from heaven in Hebrew, that's when you, you people are finally going to understand, you Puerto Ricans are going to understand <laughs> that you ain't Puerto Ricans, man. Right. All right, just along with all you other tribes, you Haitians, you're not fucking Haitian. All right, you Cherokee, you Navajo, you, you're not Navajo, you're not Cherokee, you're Gadites. You're from the tribe of Gad. Mm -hmm. All right, and now the rest of you, all you other tribes, man. So shout along to your life and give all praise to you. Shout along to the elect, double honor to our elders and apostles, the true masters in these times, and the rulers known as Great Millstone that actually taught us this truth, taught us this language. And who we are in the breakdowns, man. All right, so the water and double honors to you all. Shalom. 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 Shalom.